yeah, yeah. yeah. You can that. sit. I'll do some yoga. All right. Do we have some questions in the audience? No, you've already gotten all your questions out? Uh, I don't even know who I'm directing this to. Uh, I'll pick Adib. Oh. Uh, crystal ball time. When uh, Best Buy. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, I, I think we got to, let's see how it sells on the website. Uh, the Best Buy is... I don't know if we want to sell it to the Best Buy person. The thing about the Best Buy stuff, um, the Misi, we like to say the M and Misi stood for mother um, in that it's ready for your mom. And it's not that we want to actually sell it to your mom. Um, it's a way about thinking in the limit. Um, another thing I talked to the hardware team about is the $99 Misi. It's like if we had to have the cost of this thing, you're like, okay, I'm paying $4 for the cable, $12 for the box, and then you start adding stuff up, and then you're like, wait, wait, wait this is a pretty significant percentage of my thing. So it's a way about thinking in the limit. Um, we'll see if Best Buy is that relevant. Um, I think we're still a bit ways from there, but uh, it's the first product. You know, we had a non dev kit, we had a product, um, we had a bunch of dev kits. Um, six. Maybe six X. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how this one sells. Okay, we've got one back here. Hey everyone. Uh, I just want to say, first of all, amazing work with Comma, and to you guys, to the people in the past. Um, I had a question for the ML team. I guess is in the diffusion space. Uh, one of the questions I had is, when you generate the videos, are you generating them two individual videos and then combining them, or are they one world space model that you're generating together? Uh, because the fact that they're both consistent w really like was sick, so I was just curious how that yeah. works. No, we generate them at once. Our compressor takes in both frames and compresses both of them in one latent vector. So we the world model generates uh, both frames at the same time. That's why they're so consistent. And uh, uh, there was a question about adding more more cameras, in which case we'll just add them to the compressor, and they will all be compressed in one fr in one in one latent space, and they all get generated at the same time. That's how you get uh, consistency in the dynamics and consistency in, in the in the scene. Yep. So all at once. More questions. Ask us anything. We like, we like talking about this stuff. 1.0? 1.0? Yeah. Why is zero false? Yeah. We used to have all these uh, kind of goals for this stuff. We've kind of simplified it. Um, we just shipped 010. 010 was defined by the uh, what we call the Tomb Raider architecture, which used some of the new simulator architecture. We'll ship 011, which will be the full, uh, if anybody's driven the watermelon models, that's the full world model ones. And then 1.0 will be when 10 long is in chill mode. Um, yeah. yeah. I was just curious, how, how have you kept the team so small over 10 years and still with great output? Refactoring. Uh, so we have a few teams. We can go team by, we, we can go team, by team. Uh, I can talk about uh, hardware and production and open pilot, and then uh, maybe Harold can talk about autonomy. Um, production, I'll show you. We refactor the product. Um, you know, we refactor the product, we refactor the space, um, we designed them together. Um, the factory is the product. Um, the hardware team has grown a little bit um, with this product. Um, it really didn't get out the door until we grew the team a little bit. Um, the fact that it's so quiet was uh, one of the big contributions from our new members. Um, beautiful design uh, was uh, Nick. And then the, the software team hasn't grown as much, but that's, uh, uh, we'd like it to grow a little bit. Uh, we'd like to ship a beautiful mobile app. Um, I'd love to ship fast boot times. I'd love to ship a new updater. I'd love to ship tons of software stuff. Um, but we don't have to grow that much. Um, we really just focus on uh, the open pilot you get should be like some second order effect of uh, the kind of infrastructure that we set up. Um, so we spend a lot of time on that and it's, it's about being really focused. You might see us like recoil a bit when somebody has cameras or carports or and this kind of stuff. This is part of it, yeah, um, it's this focus. Um, yeah, I think the general answer is just managing complexity and staying focused. I think one thing that I really liked is something George brought up a lot is that uh, the management boundaries in your company are generally reflected in the code base API boundaries. 
Um, and so it's really important to refactor the team to make sure that the API boundaries in the code also make sense. And I think one example of this is that we used to have somewhat distinct boundaries between controls and the machine learning policy, but these things are very intertwined and having those things be two separate teams and having essentially both a people and a code boundary there made that there was a lot of inefficiency. Both teams often just blamed each other on, oh, this is a controls problem, this is a model problem, but I mean, it's really intertwined. It's usually a combination of those things. So then refactoring that into uh, this all being one joint problem, just controlling the car, I think, reduces a lot of the code complexity and then also allows people to make better improvements without uh, you know, bloating uh, the software and, and creating more overhead. And I mean, you know, my talk was kind of about exactly this problem is how do you, how are we able to develop quickly? How are we able to ship improvements quickly and making sure that all of the infrastructure and stuff is in place there? And it's basically the things I talked about in my talk is right. You have really good tests, really good infrastructure, and uh, you keep it all simple enough that everyone kind of has oversight. This entire thing is managed by, you know, including the data center, all the tools, everything is managed by, you know, five, six people. Uh, so I think that keeps it simple. We're off something big, actually. Oh, sorry, I just want to shout out our community. Um, obviously, we have tons of contributors on GitHub. It's open source. Um, you see a bunch of them over there. There's a bunch more in the crowd, and there's way more on GitHub online. So big shout out to the contributors. So, uh, I mean, Kama has a mission of solving self-driving cars and delivering shippable intermediaries. And you have to ask the question for a lot of these large companies what their mission really is. And a lot of these companies' mission is to pump their share price. And investors haven't quite caught on yet, but one way you can make your company look big and important is by hiring lots and lots and lots of people, right? Look at these, thi we have a thousand people. <laughs> you good? <laughs> we, we have a thousand people, wow, that's a legitimate team. And until people with money just completely stop funding this kind of stuff, you're gonna see it. But the reason we're small is because our incentive is to solve a problem. The reason they're big is because their incentive is to raise their share price. And investors see big company, big share price. Oh, yes. Got a question over here. Uh, for the C4 and the two-year warranty, do you still get that with Prime Lite, or do you get it with the full 24, full version of Prime? Full Prime, $24 a month. Other questions? We'll clarify on the website this week. Is, is there a reason the video segments are one minute? Or is like the extras kind of, how do you guys end up at one minute segments? Uh, I don't know. It's you can do now. Does anybody know? Well, yeah, it's a good length, you know? Yeah. It's a good length. <laughs> What's the history behind the one minute segment? Um, I mean, we had some choices. We thought about 53 seconds, but we thought 60 would kind of just be better. <laughs> You know, with all these uh, forks and variants, have you guys been thinking more about third-party APIs or SDKs and making it easier to develop on or pull data out of? Uh, yeah, so I mean, we have the best one. Um, all the code's open source. You can mess around with it. Um, as far as what happens on the back end, um, this is also pretty transparent as far as like if you want to interface with our app and stuff, if you're making some kind of open pilot like software, um, it's pretty clear how our software works if you just mimic it. Um, and then as far as making forks trainable and stuff like this, we're starting to move in this direction. Um, I think it's playing out such that open pilot is like, it, we know open pilot's pretty bare bones. Um, we want to just sell you a thing. If you go to our website, you find your car, you find the Honda Civic, you click add, and you get it. We want you to set up in five minutes, and you don't really have to think about it. Um, this is all the experience we all drive with. Um, and then you know you have Sunny Pilot, you got Frog Pilot, you got Star Pilot, you got Blue Pilot, who do the Fords. Um, this is like all the Linux distros. And some people, you know, they, they hear open source and they think hacky. Um, but I mean, Linux is everywhere, um, and Open Pilot will be the Linux. Got one back here. Are you guys planning on keeping two modes for the foreseeable future? Like, why not just one mode or three? Like, chill versus... We don't want to, but... 
I mean, the reason there's experimental mode is because if we made it the default, people would be upset. Uh, we want that to be the default mode, but it's just not good enough yet. So, I mean, that's what we're working towards, uh, is making that good enough to be the default. All right, one more question over here. So, I'm not sure if you already covered this, but um, is the external GPU going to be usable properly on the C3X, or is there something specifically on MISI that requires it, just making sure? So it does work. Um, the MISI has one thing that's very specific, comma four. Um, the comma four has one thing that's specific. Um, we improved it, so I don't know how many of you know this, uh, but uh, USB and GPS don't like each other. Um, and the thing is we need GPS to train. Um, you saw Mitchell's talk, um, you saw how the localization stack works. Um, so we didn't know this uh, until we did the comma four. And uh, so we made some improvements in that regard. Um, so that's the one big difference, but for the user, we might not just we might not be able to trade on your segments, but as far as we know, there's, there's no differences right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. GPS doesn't work on your 3X without a GPU. Most of my friends. Which at runtime is no longer required. When the 3X launched, it was required at runtime to drive. Um, we've removed this. Um, refactor, refactor, refactor. All right, we might have time for one more question. So I was wondering how um, the Coma Prime works in terms of like a cellular plan. Do I have to kind of use my own eSIM or physical SIM in order to kind of get the benefits of it? Or do you supply, because I remember at some point it came with uh, cellular, cellular from Coma, I believe. Yeah, so uh, since we introduced Coma Prime, we would ship like a T-Mobile or an AT&T SIM. It changed over the years. Um, and the problem with those SIMs, uh, those are just normal SIMs, um, like pre-eSIMs. And as soon as you cancel those, just because this is how the carriers operate, you can't reactivate them. We'd have to ship you a new SIM. Um, so the eSIM just simplifies that. Um, it's still a very managed experience. And there's a lot of subtleties to eSIMs, unfortunately. But the eSIM that's in uh, the Comma 4 is the same type of eSIM that's in your iPhone. So if you want to take your Comma 4 and you want to install your own eSIM, um, we don't have a convenient interface for that yet, but the hardware totally supports it. Um, and right now what the software supports is setting up our managed experience. So Comma Prime is a totally managed experience. Then we offer Prime Lite, um, mostly for international people. Um, and if you want to install your own SIM, that kind of stuff, you're totally able to. Um, but the Comma 4 vibe is, you know, it just works. So for international, uh, I basically have to have my own uh, Yeah, yeah. Can we fix that? Especially Canada. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on it. All right. The team will be around. Oh, so sorry. The team will be around for more questions out in the space. They love talking about things. So p feel free if you have any unanswered questions, find them, talk to them. We have one more talk, uh, which is going to be over here by the Porsche by one of our star contributors, Jason Young. Um, if you were at Comic Con two years ago, he gave a talk how to port a car. This is how to port a car V2. So. Um, he is going to go live, so we're going to need about five mi minutes to transition our camera over there. Um, but we invite you to go see his talk. It's starting in approximately five minutes. Um, after that, there will be pizza. The bar is still open. And if you have not picked up your merch yet, please remember to do so before you leave tonight. I want to give a big thank you to the whole team. They have worked so hard uh, to bring you this beautiful comma four, and we're so excited to share it with you today. Big shout out to the people that aren't on stage also, our production team, our fulfillment team. They are all here, and they work behind the scenes to build these beautiful devices and get them shipped out to all of you. So thank you so much for being here. We're so excited. Uh, I just want to give a live update to my talk, um, Maxime and I's talk. Uh, we, we, brief, we briefly talked about PyTest in the beginning, uh, using that for our test suite. And my, again, my point was that you shouldn't always rely on libraries because they, they, uh, they, they take out the complexity for you. And just today, eight hours ago, PyTest pushed an update that broke OpenDBC test, so I had to fix that just now. So, <laughs> yeah, we should write our own PyTest. <laughs>